One of the biggest advantages you can get in D&D is how much you can do with your action economy. For a martial character, that's almost directly related to how many attacks you can get per turn. Today's build is going to give us a ton of attacks on top of some battlefield control and overall just having a high impact in combat. Let's do this. Before we're getting started on the build, I have a favor to ask you all. We have now hit 13,500 subscribers and I'm trying to get it to that 14,000 point. So if you want to do me a solid, just scroll down, hit that subscribe button and I'd appreciate it. All right, now to the build. Our leveling structure is going to be one level into the War Domain Cleric and five levels into Echo Knight, followed by four more levels into War Domain. And then past that, we have some options that we'll discuss later. Beginning with our lineage, this build is going to have a lot to do with our action and bonus action. And so we want to invest in our reaction so we have some action economy outside of those already full options. The Goliath really stands out to me here. I love that the Goliath can use its reaction to make us way, way tankier throughout a day. So we're gonna be taking Goliath. For our stats, we're looking at strength, wisdom, and constitution. These are fairly equal throughout. I might lean towards a bit more strength. You could also choose to lean a bit more wisdom with constitution being the secondary for both, but it has higher value than normal because we're Echo Knight. But the main point is that as far as our dexterity, intelligence, and charisma, we're gonna be dumping them to get as many points into those other three as possible. Starting off, we go Cleric 1. Cleric gives us a ton right off the bat. Beginning with Wisdom Saving Throw Proficiency, which I am obviously a sucker for. We're also going to get Proficiency in Martial Weapons, as well as All Armors. We also get Cleric Spellcasting. The ones that stand out to me are definitely Guiding Bolt for a powerful ranged option, and Bless. Bless is fantastic on a Martial, giving us more Saving Throw Defense, but also making our attacks more consistent. That can be a big deal. By being a War Cleric, we get War Priest at level 1. This allows us to make a bonus action attack whenever we take the action attack, a wisdom modifier amount of times per day. For now, that's probably going to be in between two and three attacks per day. It's not crazy, but it's always a great bonus, and it actually is quite powerful in the earlier levels, but that will fall off quite a bit as we go. At level two, we go into fighter, and fighter is kind of a crossroads for us because we can decide to be more of a sword and board defender or we can go a great weapon master route and the fighting style really decides that if you're going with the sword and board dueling fighting style stands out but if you're going with the great sword then the defensive fighting style stands out to me for this particular build i've decided to go with the great sword as our weapon option at level two we pick up the almighty action surge but we're going to talk more in detail on that a bit later at level three we're picking up the crazy powerful echo knight it's no surprise to anyone that echo knight is an incredibly powerful powerful subclass and we're going to be abusing the crap out of it with this build. Of course, it gives us the ability to create this apparition that is outside of us and can do a, as much damage as we can while putting us at very little risk. It also increases our mobility, allowing us to have basically infinite teleports, which is just insane. And on top of that, it's going to give us Unleashed Incarnation. Unleashed Incarnation allows us to make an extra attack when we take the attack action, and it doesn't even count as a bonus action. We can do this constitution number of times per day. This means even at level four, we can have a turn where we get five attacks. We have our base attack, Unleashed Incarnation, bonus action War Priest, action surge for an attack, and our second Unleashed Incarnation. So that's a lot of burst damage coming in really early in the campaign. And that's kind of the idea behind this build is we want to keep capitalizing on that concept. At level four, we pick up our first ASI. And again, this is a branching paths. There's so many different play styles we can do with this combination, but I've decided to go with the great weapon master. The main reason for that is that we want incredibly high damage output because we have pretty naturally powerful defenses just by using our echoes in front of us where we can just kind of stay on the back line. So we have front line like defenses, but get to stay on the back line. So our defenses are crazy. So we just really need to worry about our offense and every attack matters. We're about multiplying our attacks. So getting the most value out of each attack is the way we take this and make it a, a far more powerful character. And I think great weapon master is a great way to do that. At level five, we get our extra attack feature. So now we can do seven attacks in a single turn if we want to nuke someone down. And keep in mind, those are great weapon master attacks. So that's a crazy amount of burst damage. This can take out bosses extremely quickly. Now we're going to shift back into cleric. We're going to be taking cleric to five. This first levels or cleric two is going to be about getting our channel divinity, which is going to give us one attack that is basically guaranteed to hit. Great synergy with great weapon master when we really need to get that damage done. At cleric three, the main thing we're getting is second level spells. And the one that stands out to me is spiritual weapon. We have a lot of burst damage with our bonus actions, but they're ultimately limited. By adding in spiritual weapon, we can have both a disjointed attack with spiritual weapon and a disjointed attack with our echo. And we can do it over and over and over again. So it gives us a lot of battlefield sustain. At cleric four, we're picking up another 
another ASI. And here I just want to round out our stats. Specifically strength would be really good based on this many attacks and it makes great weapon master more likely to hit. So it is kind of building out the core of our playstyle. But again, I just want to point out that had we gone a wisdom route, this could be a totally different situation here. And there's so much flexibility you can do with this build. What I want to hear from you guys is what you would have done at these crossroads and what you would have come out with. Let me know in the comments down below. At Cleric 5, we're getting the almighty Spirit Guardians. Spirit Guardians has crazy synergy with Echo Knight. For example, we can put our body between our allies and our enemies. So if they want to get to our teammates, now they have to have half movement. We can stop them from even approaching our allies, but we can also pursue people really well. Let's put somebody on the edge of our spirit guardians. If they want to move closer to us, they're taking an opportunity attack from our Echo, and then they have to run through this half movement, barely get to us, and then they're guaranteeing they take spirit guardians damage next turn. Or they can run away, but our Echo is positioned that we can teleport to our Echo and follow right behind them so they can never escape our Spirit Guardians. It really opens up a key word for fun builds, which is optionality. There are so many different ways to play this. You can get behind enemy lines, you can be a tank for your team, you can chase people down, you can isolate people. There's so many things you can do because you have that combination of high mobility with Spirit Guardians and your disjointed attacks. It really comes together in a nasty combination. And that's before we're even talking about adding Spiritual Weapon on top of all of this. This is where we're gonna bring up action surge again because getting spirit guardians up takes a full action but we might want to get attacks right away as well that's where action surge comes in i just want to point out the damage output of this build we have tons of attacks potentially with great weapon master combined with the nasty spirit guardians control and damage spiritual weapon on top of that so we just have a ton of attacks that we're doing over and over again with spells supporting this can hit crowds this can hit single targets this is just a ton of damage output this is a striker at heart with a lot of defensive control options finally we have another branching paths moment what do we do now well we can go more into fighter go get our third extra attack that can be powerful we can go more into cleric trying to upcast our spirit guardians that can be useful we can even do something like go gloom stalker this makes us go faster in combat gives us more attacks on that first turn and gives us new spells and optionality all the good things and that's before even talking about giving us basically greater invisibility when in darkness comes as no surprise gloom stalkers cracked whatever you end up choosing you're gonna be a hard as hell hitting striker with control options with a ton of survivability and just overall a really well-rounded powerful build